On the 19th of January 2038, time will cease to exist. And I don't mean how time stops when you're sitting in a boring classroom or when you're held up in some long dragged out meeting. What I mean is that the time won't be the time anymore. That's a little weird considering almost everything we do is operated on a time by time basis. From the moment when you wake up, go to work, use your phone, or eat lunch, time is the tool you use to keep track of when things get done. In a world dominated by schedule, this day is a big problem when you realize that that's the day we run out of time. Every computer, whether it be your phone, laptop, or smartwatch, keeps track of the time by continuously counting up. The way these counted seconds are stored varies from device to device, but there is one standard that still dominates, 32-bit Unix time. So what, or more importantly, when is 32-bit Unix time? Well, let's go back to January 1st, 1970 to answer that question. This is the day that the Unix time clock started ticking, otherwise known as the Unix epic. This is important to understand because for an overwhelming number of old and modern machines alike, this is where they start their counting. From the Unix epic, any computer can calculate the exact time and date. The simplest way a device stores this time is as a 4-byte signed integer, otherwise known as a 32-bit signed integer. This means that there are 32 bits, each that can be a 1 or a 0, that make up the full integer value. There is a maximum of 2,147,483,647 different permutations of 1s and zeros that can be made with only 32 bits, making that the largest number that can be stored. Remember though, this is a signed integer, which means it can encode a negative value up to that point as well. For most of history, a programming language known as C used 32-bit integers with Unix time for a set of functions and routines known as the Standard Time Library. Because it was programmed only to use 32-bit signed integers, it can only store the time up to around 2,147,000,000 seconds. This means that there is a time limitation on systems that do use the C programming language. But big deal, I mean, the C programming language isn't even that widely used, right? Well, considering that Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, vehicles, robots, coffee makers, garage doors, and even toasters use C to this day, it's still a pretty big deal. Now that you have a brief understanding of how computers get and store the time, we can talk about why they'll run out of it. The time difference between the Unix epoch and January 19th 2038 at 3.14 a.m. and 7 seconds are exactly this many seconds. Remember that number? It's the maximum number that can be stored with a 32-bit signed integer. Once this number is reached, the number completely flips backward to its negative self and begins to count backward towards zero. This means that the time will then be December 13th, 1901 at 8.45 p.m. and 54 seconds. As soon as the time on any device flips around to 1901, any kind of timekeeping on those devices will cease to work properly. The seriousness of the impact of the bug ranges from minor problems such as the date on your oven not being incorrect to serious implications such as whole power grids going down due to incorrect times given. So January 19th, 2038 is it. It's the day that our computers stop working, our economies crash, our vehicles stop running, and our toasters stop toasting. Except not exactly. First off, the most vulnerable systems are those that are embedded systems. You can think of an embedded system as a system that isn't necessarily meant to be upgraded or changed within its lifetime. This means that things such as street lights, cars, microwaves, and unfortunately, toasters are all most vulnerable to this bug as it cannot be necessarily updated to solve the problem. As for other devices, there are still a few solutions that can be implemented. One solution would be to simply change the 32-bit signed integer to a 32-bit unsigned integer. This means that it would only count positive numbers, effectively doubling the number of positive integers available to count. Doing so would let Unix time count to around 2106 before it reaches the max integer of around 4.3 billion. The downside is that no time before the Unix epic can be accessed, so any pre-1970s time essentially no longer exists. Another solution would be to simply implement 64-bit Unix time into whatever device is being used. A signed 64-bit integer can store values up to 9.2 quintillion, meaning that we should be in the clear for quite a while. The downside is that 64-bit Unix time can't be easily implemented into all devices, especially outdated ones that simply can't store the integers. 
While there isn't a universal fix, there are certainly many steps that can be taken to minimize the effects of the 2038 bug. Will the world end as we know it? Probably not, and for most people, there isn't even a need to worry. Most modern devices such as the iPhone or desktop computers have already implemented 64-bit Unix time as their preferred method of keeping track of the date. Just hope that your bank updates their archaic financial system so that you don't accidentally owe them billions in negative interest. Finally, if you're still around 292 billion years from now, I guess you'll just be out of luck. Because by this year, on December 13th, Unix time will finally cease to exist. If you took the time to watch this video on time, then I think it's time you leave a like and subscribe. You don't have to, of course, but it would be a huge help to me. As usual, I've left my sources down below in a document if you'd like to do any further research on your own. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a great day.